Joining us now, Senator Ted Cruz, great state of Texas. How are you, my friend? I don't ever get to see you in person. Well, normally I'm talking to a TV camera. It's good to be in person, and it's even better to be at an amazing convention like this one. Let's talk about it. And, and all this and, talk. And by the way, Kai's coming for your job. She can have it. <laughs> <laughs> She's better than me already, I can tell. Let's talk a little bit about this convention, your speech last night. We're 60 days away from early voting yep. in Pennsylvania. We don't even know who the Democratic candidate no. fully is. Thoughts? Uh, look, it, it is not going to be Joe Biden. And, and as you You're know... You've been saying that. Why I, are you I so convinced? I predicted that 10 months ago you on did? my podcast verdict. I said 10 months ago... You did? The Democrats are going to pull Joe Biden off, off the ticket. They're going to replace him with Michelle Obama, is what I predicted. And at the time that the corporate media went nuts, said I was a moonbat lunatic... I, I think we are days away from By the Biden way, we being off share the that. I get called the same thing. Yeah. Um, my sources are telling me it's 50 50 still. Like, they're saying it, the White House is denying it, but more than before, it seems more real. Look, I, I think it is north of 90% right now. You've got the entire Democrat Party that has come out against him. You've got Obama that's come out against him. You've got Chuck Schumer. You've got Pelosi. You've got Jeffries. You've got the donors. You've got the corporate media. You've got Hollywood. Like, everyone is arrayed against him. And, and listen, think about how, how Nixon stepped down. He stepped down because a handful of old bulls from the Senate. Like Barry Goldwater went to the Oval, right? And, and they didn't do so gently. They said, either you step down or the House will impeach you and will convict you and remove you. At the end of the day, the hammer the Democrats have, if they want to use it, is the 25th Amendment. Yeah. And the 25th Amendment takes the vice okay. president and half so the cabinet. So explain this. So he's not qualified to run, but he's qualified to be president now. And by the way, we're they were surprised that he's a cognitive mess. Senator, I don't think anybody in the country ran those tapes of Joe more right. than yours truly. Yeah. Look, everyone who was paying attention knew a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, that, that, that Biden's mental capabilities had diminished. You're right. No Democrat cared. They didn't care until they believed he was going to lose. So have you heard a single Democrat say the man is demented, he's not competent to tie his shoes, but he shouldn't be commander in chief right now? I mean, listen, wow. there comes a time where you take the keys away from grandpa. In this case, those keys are attached to ICBMs. By the way, a frightening thought. Um, we're going to bring in a fellow senator. Is that okay with you? I think you guys are friends. Uh, you, you, you've got the Cuban caucus right here. Oh, geez. Here we go. Is that what we call Two Cubans way, is a great trend, but three is a conspiracy. You gotta be now, he was supposed to be on last night, but he ditched me to be in the box with President Trump. I don't know. How should I take that? You're my senator. I know, but he's the president from Florida, too, as well. So. <laughs> That's true. Uh, great to see you. I Good thought you thing. gave a very great, gracious speech. You are a, the, the finalist, really, from all my sources. Um, what was that like for you? It was great. And I got to know President Trump even deeper, you know, at a, and I worked with him closely when he was president. And, um, and and it was great. But he had a lot of really good choices. I mean, JD's going to be really, really good. I mean, I don't I think people got a glimpse of it last night. I've known him now for about six years, started really interacting with him in 2018, actually helped us with some policy stuff. And then he's gone to Senate. And Ted will tell you, I mean, he's one of the smartest people around. Right. Uh, right after Ted Cruz, he's the second smartest guy. And, and, well, you uh, know, Alan Dershowitz says that he was, in all the years that he was a professor at Harvard, that this guy was his best student. And you yeah. guys don't agree on much. Uh, we don't, but Dershowitz is, is, is an amazing professor. And I'll tell you, like millions of Americans, Joe Biden is driving him away from the Democrat Party because they've gotten so radical. When they're too far left for Alan Dershowitz, that tells you they've really gone off the cliff. That's true. That's a great point. Um, there's so much at stake here. You see, regardless of what happens to Joe, I make the point that policy-wise, everything is going to remain the same. Policies on open borders are not going to change. I think the biggest national security threat we have. Economic policy is not going to, be going to change. Energy policy is not going to change. But the issue of law and order and safety and security, you know, defund, dismantle, no bail, that's not going to change. The Democratic Party universally does not believe America should be the, the most dominant force on the world stage, yeah. or, or they think we're imperialists. Well, you know, I think it's one of the reasons why for three and a half years, 
they literally had a conspiracy of silence to cover up his decline because if you're a radical left-wing activist, Joe Biden's perfect career politician, 50-something years, generally been a centrist for most of his career in the old Democratic Party, and he's just a figurehead, and they hide behind him and they implement all these policies until they couldn't cover it up anymore one night in a debate, but the rest of us could see it. So now they're in a real bind. I think you make a great point. If he's not, if he doesn't have the mental acuity to be a candidate, how can he continue to be the president? Because president's a lot harder than candidate. And so they're in a mess. And it's going to be Kamala Harris. And she's a legitimate left winger. You may I mean, have to debate your fellow senator, Republican senator here. He thinks Michelle Obama. So I actually well, think it's a coin flip. A I think it's a coin flip now between Michelle Obama and Kamala. Look, if I were a Democrat, I'd want Michelle Obama as a Republican. She's by far the scariest nominee. But it's interesting. The Democrats are circling the wagons around Kamala. I think it's about 50-50 between the two of them. I think it's about 90-10. I think it's Kamala. What do you think? Well, I think it's hard. If she's your vice president, that means you think she could be president, right? How do you move her out of the way? Um, and, and that, that, but look, I'm not, I don't have deep insights into the DNC. But how undemocratic, they like to talk about democracy, this is basically an inter-party coup. So five or six I've been using that word. Right, That's coup. what it is. I mean, they're basically telling this guy, you got to go. I don't care the voters picked you. Uh, well, you we're going to remove you. We're going to cut off your money. I mean, I, I've never seen anything like it. It has no precedent in American politics. It has no precedent at all. And but again, 60 days outside of early voting in, in oh, Pennsylvania, and then it rolls out around the country. I haven't spoken to either one of you about the issue of this assassination attempt. And I am angry. Yes angry yes. at the failure of the Secret Service. I really am. Um, the idea, 130 feet away, that's a two-foot putt, that's a layup in basketball, uh, and they knew this guy was a suspect at the time. Yep. They had been following him. They lost him. One, why did they let Trump go out and speak? Right. They should have kept him in, in protective custody. Two, when the Secret Service director, and by the way, will somebody please tell Joe Biden it's a her, not a him? <laughs> that was a bad mistake. Um, when she said, I, uh, I bear all responsibility, buck stops with me, but I'm not quitting, and then said, well, it was a slow group. Why didn't you have sniper eyes on that roof? Yeah. And then we put them inside. Why didn't you surround the perimeter knowing and acknowledging that it was a threat? Look, it was an absolutely catastrophic security failure. And, and, and I believe if, if the director of the Secret Service had a shred of integrity, she would have resigned that day. And if Joe Biden or anyone in the White House had any sense, they should fire her. She, she should be fired. I've joined with a number of other senators demanding emergency hearings in the Senate Judiciary Committee committee next week with her there with the head of the FBI and you know Marco and I were both yesterday on, on a briefing with all 100 senators and the director of the Secret Service the head of the FBI it was a complete CYA they spoke for 30 minutes they talked about every detail of the day well we were in the field we were preparing this we were doing this everything except the detail that they allowed the president of the United States to be shot and then they had a couple of questions but they cut off the questions quickly, and there are a whole bunch of questions she needs to ask. Like, she needs to be fired and fired yes. immediately. I think all three of us agree with yeah, that. No, yes. I do. What, I do. Let's get your thoughts on this. How can this happen in this day and age? I can tell you, look, there is no way in the world that there should be a 20-year-old kid. This is not Jason Bourne, okay? We're not talking about some secret agent here. Some 20-year-old kid climbs on top of a roof 150 yards away and takes a shot, and he was identified hours earlier. Now, they can blame it all they want on other agencies that were there. The responsibility of securing the perimeter in that event is the Secret Service. I'm not talking about the guys. You know some of these guys that are with I, Trump. By the these way, the guys agents, that, that protected absolutely. the president on the stage, they were phenomenal. They're heroes. Phenomenal. The agents They're heroes. themselves, absolutely. they put their bodies in harm's way. It's the political leadership and, that right. failed. And that event was poorly advanced in terms of security. And and I want to know, is this, a, is this a one off or is this becoming a systemic problem within the agency? Look, the Secret Service doesn't just protect the lives of presidents and vice presidents and candidates. They protect our country. Where would we be tonight if that thing had horrifyingly ended in the, in the 
live execution of the next president of the United States in front of the eyes of the world, where would this country be tonight? We would be in a catastrophic situation. They also protect our country. Our le the leadership of that agency has failed us. And why aren't they having daily press briefings, providing as many details as yep. possible? Well, I, how is it that when we have a school shooting, almost within hours, we know a lot about the shooter? Yeah, yeah. And how is it in this case, this happened on Saturday. It is now Thursday. We know little to nothing really about the person. You know, and on top of it, and this is your wheelhouse, Iran had issued an assassination order against yeah. Donald Trump, what, weeks earlier? Yeah, but that's not new. You know, they've gone after, they want him, Pompeo, there's a bunch of people that they threaten. But here's here's why it's relevant. Now, there's no evidence that this is the guy that they would have hired. But here's, here's the, if you know that, that's even more of how can this be possible. I mean, if this kid was able to get this off, what would an Iranian agent, trained agent, be able to pull off? This is yeah. very, very disturbing. Very disturbing, and we need to get to the bottom of it. And um, quickly, we need to, under and, and, and she needs to resign because she has no credibility left. She literally has no credibility. I imagine even I, with her own agents. And I'll tell you one last thing, and I'll get this uh, reaction from Senator Cruz. Senator, it cannot be this agency investigating themselves. No. We must have an outside agency. A absolutely, and we need accountability to the American people. There are obvious questions. Why were there not more agents? Why were there not sufficient agents to secure the secure the arena? Why were there not, why was that rooftop not secured? Why was there not aerial support, drones and helicopters? Why was there, Great. why when why they was it no this sniper individual with eyes. a rangefinder, did they not detain him Great they, point. They had, you, you had uh, uh, people, participants, pointing him out. There's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And why on earth did they let President Trump go on the stage? The Secret Service could have said, we've got an active shooter. Stay where you are until we detain him. It is a massive failure all along, and we've heard zero accountability from anyone. Okay. Both of you are good friends of mine. Although, I have to tell you, He's my senator now. I know, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm a... We tried to get you to come to Texas. I am an honorary Texan. Yeah. Uh, Rick Perry made me uh, one. Absolutely. But I'm a Floridian. That's right. We're happy so, to have you. Thank you, Senator. Good to see you both. Senator thank Cruz, you. Senator Rubio, we appreciate you being with us. 